What is up everybody? On today's project, I'm going to show you step by step how I replaced the front door on my fixer upper property, taking it from this to this. Let's get into the video. So when I bought this property, the existing front door was in terrible shape. It looked like some butt. See? It's even got the crack. But in all seriousness, this door was killing my curb appeal. It was drafty as anything, so let's get rid of it. So the first step in removing a front door is to remove the casing and the trim from the inside interior of the home. Just use a pry bar and a hammer, and be sure to you know take your time so you don't damage the drywall. Next, you can move outside, use a utility knife to score the caulk around the brick mold, which is just that piece of trim on the exterior, and again, pry it off with a pry bar. Here is a look at the door with the brick mold removed. Once the trim is removed, you'll see that the door jam is attached to the rough framing with a few screws as you just saw. And the quickest way I found to get rid of those is just to use a reciprocating saw and cut those off. You might be able to unscrew them from the inside, but if you have a saw, I would use it. It's gonna go a lot quicker. Do this for as many screws you have attaching the jam to the rough frame. Once you've cut all the screws attaching the jam to the door frame, your door should be free to be removed. So go ahead and just tilt it out of place along the sill and then carry it away so you're not having to step over it or it's in the way when you go to install your new door. And here is a look at the rough frame with the existing door removed. So this is what we were dealing with. They literally have the joists. There's three joists, no sill pan, no nothing. <laughs> So we'll go ahead and vacuum everything out and get it set. So at this point, you're gonna vacuum out any dirt or debris that might be left in your opening, remove any screws or nails that are gonna impact the new door. And once that's done, you can proceed. Now, because my rough opening didn't have enough clearance for me to put a piece of pressure treated plywood on the bottom there, I used a wood sealer to basically try to waterproof it as best I could. I'll link that in the description. Next. I measured the bottom of the rough opening in preparation for installation of this PVC sill plate, and you can cut that to size with either a miter saw or some heavy duty tin snips. The sill plate comes in three different pieces, one that goes on the bottom and these two end caps, and I'm showing there how it fits together. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna prevent any water that drips down the door from ever making its way underneath. So there I am dry fitting it, and once I've confirmed that the fit is good, the, uh, the sill pan comes with this PVC cement, and I'm applying that to the sill plate right there and then attaching the end cap, holding it in place for a few seconds to make sure the bond is good. And once it is attached, I moved on to the other side, again, applying that PVC cement, holding it in place. And once that's done, I was prepared to go ahead and install the sill plate. After confirming fit, go ahead and apply construction adhesive or sealant to the bottom of your rough opening there and then install the sill plate in place. Make sure that it's aligned correctly, it's flush with the exterior of your home's sheathing, and then check the level to make sure that you're not gonna have any issues with your door installation. Once you've confirmed the fit, there are tabs on the end of the sill plate that will allow you to install screws, locking the sill plate in place. After locking the sill plate in place, we're going to install some waterproof flashing along the door rough opening that is gonna overlap the sill plate. That way any water that might get behind the door will make its way down on top of the sill plate and out to the home's exterior, never introducing any kind of water damage to your home's frame. So as you can see, I'm just running that along the door rough opening on the entire side, and then I'm running it over the top here using a utility knife to kind of score it and fold it over cleanly, and then trimming any excess off with the utility knife. Moving over to the other side of the door, we're doing the exact same thing. We're running the waterproof flashing right over that sill plate flange all the way up top, giving us a nice waterproof seal all the way around. And here I am showing how the sill pan has a slope design, so any water that makes its way on top is going to run down those perforations to the outside of your home. This next step is optional, but you can apply a bead of sealant to the back side of the sill pan only. Here's a look. I got it a little bit dirty. I'm kind of embarrassed, but here's a look at the sill pan in place with that bead of caulk towards the back and definitely try to be cleaner than I was here. Not ideal. So at this point, any criminals miss their chance because the door is going back in place. So we're going to put some sealant around the exterior of the brick mold. And the idea here is that once we put the door in place and press the brick mold against the home's sheathing or siding or house wrap, whatever you want to call it, it's going to have a nice seal. Here I am lifting the door up in place 
And what you're going to do, if you have help, I would say use it. Remove the chick plug, which holds the door in place during transit. That way you can open it up and then lift the pre-hung door up into place, rest it on the sill, and then kind of push it back again so that it sits within the rough opening properly. And then just press the door into place so that the brick mold contacts your home's sheathing or house wrap. So at this point, install one screw through the pre-drilled hole in the hinge. This is temporary just to hold the door in place. Do not over tighten. Next, confirm that the door is plumb, level, and is sitting properly in the door's opening. This is gonna involve checking that it's flush with the drywall on the inside and that the brick mold is totally pressed up against your home's exterior. Then again, check the plumb all the way as you go up, installing the screws temporarily in the hinges. We're not over tightening at this stage. Now at this point, we're going to install shims behind each hinge. The shims are used to make minor adjustments to ensure that your jam is perfectly plumb from top to bottom on the hinge side of your door. This step is iterative, add and remove shims as needed to ensure that the door jam is plumb. And once you're happy with how everything's lining up, fully secure the screws locking the hinge side of the door in place. With the hinge side of the door locked in place, we'll move over to the lock side. And because we don't have the hinges with the pre-drilled holes, we need to pre-drill behind the weather stripping on the lock side. This will hide the screws that we install later. All right, so you go ahead and you will shim your door until when you close it, you're happy with the reveal. And once you are, you will go back here. I pre-drilled a hole you can see it's hidden behind the weather stripping Fill that back and then tighten it at this point you can tighten down the screw don't tighten it all the way because again it's going to be iterative to achieve the right reveal between the door and the jam so here i am moving on to the top and making a couple adjustments until i had that right and then i moved on and installed the shims right behind the deadbolt location Typically, you're gonna have a screw at the bottom, the top, and then two right above and below the deadbolt. Here I am checking that I'm happy with everything. And then I went and I retightened the screws, fully tightening the lock side. At this stage, you can use either a utility knife or a oscillating tool like that to cut off any of the excess shims so that they're not impacting your casing installation later. So here I am doing this for all of the shims around the entire door. If you have multiple shims, an oscillating tool is gonna to be way easier than a utility knife. And if you have an air compressor and a brad nailer, some people will install a few brad nails into the brick mold to fully secure it to your home. Use exterior rated brad nails. So at this point, I installed the new door hardware. It was a little intimidating drilling through a brand new door, but I promise you, you got this. I'll link the actual door handle I used in the description if you want to check that one out. And I didn't show this on the front door, but you're going to have to install and replace your door casing with brad nails. Next up, you're going to use a high quality exterior caulk or sealant to seal the gap between the brick mold and your home siding, preventing water from getting behind the door. And here I am showing how I did that on my basement door as well. I'll link that project in the description. Next up, you're going to want to use a spray foam insulation to insulate between the door jam and the rough framing. This will prevent any kind of drafts from coming through. And then you can use a utility knife to cut off any excess foam that protrudes out from the gap between the jam and the door frame. It's pretty easy and kind of satisfying. And finally, I masked off the door and I hit it with a paint color that I highly regret, but I used my airless paint sprayer. Let's take a look at the final result. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like down below and consider subscribing if you like this kind of DIY content. I appreciate it and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.